So for example, at the turn of the century, in the turn of the 19th century, for example, where you have in the South black men accounting for something like 70 or 80 percent of male um, criminals, you have black women accounting for 90, 95 percent of all female criminals. And those kind of trends hold right up until the early 20th century. It's really not until mid kind of 20th century that you start to have black men actually being more disproportionately represented in black women. But that's actually a very, very recent phenomenon. And it's partly because um, more recently, black women's representation in the prison system has dropped, literally in the last few years. So this idea about mass incarceration has a much longer history, and it's been greatly compounded by more recent legislation in certainly the 70s and up through the 1980s with the Rockefeller drug laws and some of the other policies enacted during you know, the Nixon administration. But Black people have always been disproportionately represented um, in America's criminal justice system. And here's the thing, none of us is opposed to personal responsibility, but I think that we need to really consider the ways in which that is punished in our current justice system. So for me, there's something horribly wrong with us putting juveniles in prison for stealing a car or a radio or a phone, but excusing bankers who have engaged in wholesale fraud that's literally destabilized the national economy. I have a problem with that. So for me, it isn't that I don't want young people to have personal responsibility or be held accountable for their actions, but I think that we need to make sure that everybody who commits a crime in this society is appropriately held accountable and not you know, focus all of our punishment on disadvantaged children while we let the most elite um, criminals go scot-free.